Hi, I'm Maggie Greenfield. I'm the Executive Director of the Bronx River Alliance. Welcome to our first ever virtual Amazing Bronx River Flotilla. Are you guys ready to go on a tour of the freshwater portion of the Bronx River? We're gonna see amazing things with our Bronx River guides, things like old growth forests along the river, green infrastructure projects that help clean the water, um, but we're also gonna see some troubling things like choking invasive Japanese knotweed and street trash floating downstream. And that's why we need your help. Uh, if you can pledge your support to the river, it means so much to our work. Just click on the link in the description in the chat and show your support for the river. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle and Christian for the tour. Hi, welcome to the Bronx River. My name is Michelle Lupke and I'm the Director of Environmental Stewardship for the Bronx River Alliance. We're really excited to show you the river today and tell you all about all the things that we've been doing to help protect, improve, and restore the Bronx River. My name is Christian Murphy and I'm the Ecology Coordinator for the Bronx River Alliance. My job at the Alliance is to collect and oversee data collection and to organize uh, community science stewards uh, who collect data on our behalf. Welcome to beautiful Shoelace Park. We are in the North Bronx, and it's called Shoelace because it's so long and skinny, like Shoelace. If you can hear that noise behind us, that is the Bronx River Parkway over there. So the river was actually much curvier than this, historically, but it was straightened when the parkway was built. And that causes all sorts of problems for the river. Rivers make x-curves to dissipate their energy or get rid of their energy in the same way that a skier does big s-curves as it as they ski down a mountain so leisurely s-curves actually makes for a natural river and that's that's what a river wants to do the army corps of engineers is actually has a big project a multi-million dollar project that if congressional approval goes through will actually start to re-wiggle the bronx river through shoelace park which will absolutely help it and help all the things that we're trying to do so we'll explore some more this is a really exciting part of the river because we're coming out of the super straight shoelace park and we are turning the corner into the only remaining oxbow on the river. So this is normally what the river would look like. And you can see it builds up a point bar on that side. And this is the cut bank because it's wiggling this way. So here we are in the section of the river known as Fort Knox. What we're trying to do here is do a big restoration project where we actually restore the riparian vegetation or the native reg uh, vegetation that should be occurring next to the river and then also create some stormwater and erosion prevention features on this side of the bank. By removing the invasive species here upstream, we're preventing them from sending their seeds downstream to where we've been working so hard See, we have some beautiful native tree canopy here that's doing an excellent job stabilizing the bank. It just doesn't have any other plants in the, low, in the understory or the middle story, like shrubs. So this is a location where we want to do some more restoration. You can see it's, it's one of the areas of the river that we'll be going through today that's, that's not as restored as some of our other freshwater sections. So we are looking for funding to, um, to help complete this project and help re-naturalize the area. Right now what you can see is this is just all Japanese knotweed and that is the biggest invasive species that we have to battle on the river. It basically outcompetes all of the native species and even a lot of the other invasive species. That's what an in invasive species does. It comes in and it just takes over. We have been battling knotweed up and down the river. It's particularly challenging because it's not that good at holding the soil. It only secures like the cup, top couple of inches of soil. So you do get a lot of erosion even though the bank looks like it's covered with vegetation. All of this here on the right side of the bank, that's all knotweed. There's nothing else growing in there at all. Yeah, so this bank here, you can see it's been cut. Um, that's a big, that's a very eroded surface there. Three roots are all exposed. 
The very shallow knotweed roots are also exposed. You can see how useless they are at holding the bank together. And you can see what a native tree is supposed to do. They're supposed to keep the bank stable and strong, and they're supposed to prevent uh, the river from taking too much sediment. You can see a lot of Japanese knotweed on the bank, but a lot of places where there isn't Japanese knotweed. And that's attributable to our Bronx River Conservation Crew. They are the eyes and ears and the art, the hard work that goes into this river. Another way we try to make the river a little cleaner is through our community science programs called Project Water Drop. And that is devoted to looking at the level of fecal pathogens in our river. So that's another major pollutant in the river. And that can come from outfalls like these that put wastewater into the, the river. Now this is not a CSO. A CSO is a combined sewage overflow. So that happens more downstream. And yet we still see very, very high fecal pathogen content in the freshwater section of the river. We're trying to figure out if maybe things like this are inadvertently giving us sewage pathogens into the river. As you can see through here, we get a lot of trash build up on the river. That's our other major community science project called Project Waste, where volunteers actually come out to the river and they help us not only by picking up the trash and removing it, they also count all the different types so we can figure out where the sources are coming from and also what are the most prevalent types of trash we find on the river. As it rains, we get a lot more trash in the river. And what we've learned from Project Waste is that we think it's related to the, combi uh, the, the separate storm sewer system. That means we get all of the storm water off of the streets. So all of this garbage, that ends up in the river. So we encourage people to do the right thing for the river and refuse single-use items and try reusables instead. So this section of the river, this is the Bronx River Forest. This is perhaps the only forested area of New York City that remains that has not been really developed at all since the colonial era. So this is sort of what New York City would have looked like hundreds of years ago. This section of the Bronx River is also, it retains its natural shape. And so as a result, this is a natural floodplain. So while a lot of areas of the river have been straightened and they can no longer sort of flex and change as the water level changes, here in the Bronx River Forest, uh, this area will actually rise up. The water level will rise up and it will flood hundreds of feet on either side of the, of the river. And it's supposed to do this. So this sort of relieves pressure on the river. Um, and the species that live in the forest are adapted to uh, periodic floods. Um, unfortunately, most of the river no longer looks like this. And so when the water floods, it sort of just finds whatever way it can. And oftentimes, that's onto the Bronx River Parkway, or that's sort of down streets near people's homes, which is not what we want. One other thing we notice when analyzing water quality data uh, especially for Enterococcus bacteria, is that the Bronx River Forest has some of the lowest bacterial levels along the entire length of the Bronx River. Uh, one of the reasons for this is the lack of outfalls just north of the Bronx River Forest. Uh, but another reason is because just north of the Bronx River Forest, there aren't many overhanging trees or other structures that block sunlight from coming onto the water. Um, so whatever bacteria is in the water already is being subject to pretty continuous UV radiation. And we believe that this excessive UV radiation actually kills a lot of these pathogens. Uh, and so as a result, this stretch of the river here is very healthy. So despite this being a very heavily forested area already, the crew does still come in. Uh, and plant trees here. And we have had people ask us, what on earth are you doing planting trees in the middle of a forest? Which is a great question. Um, and while it may not seem to make that much sense, there still are a lot of invasive species here. And one of the notable things about invasive species 
is that they produce a lot of seeds and they grow very quickly. Um, and so no matter how many native plants you have here, if you have just one standard invasive species, they will do their best to take over the landscape. So the more native plants that we have, the more robust the seed bank and the soil is. And so, right, that will help to reset the ratio between invasive seeds and native seeds. Despite all of the work that the conservation crew has done in the Bronx River Forest to sort of preserve it and maintain the native habitat, you can see that Japanese knotweed has still got quite a strong foothold here. The riverbank here should be covered with native riparian species that have deep roots that keep the riverbank stable and that provide food and shelter that's appropriate for the species that live here. And unfortunately, it's not. In between all these native trees, the thick stands of Japanese knotweed that are totally taking over the bank here. So there's still a lot of work to be done. So here we are at the island. One of the projects that the, that the New York City Parks has come up with is to actually divert most of the flow that's in the left channel into the right channel. So by diverting the water that's on the left side of the channel into the right side of the channel, then that will make this area deeper. And then this area will become more like a wetland. So this is a, an, a, an upcoming restoration project that we're very, very excited about in collaboration with New York City Parks. The Bronx River lies along the Atlantic Flyway, which is an invisible highway that birds use as they fly north and south throughout the year. Now, this is a great place for migratory bird species to stop and rest and refuel as they make their long journeys along the East Coast. And so the healthier that the Bronx River Forest is, is the healthier that these migratory bird species will be. And you see over 100 species fly through the area every year. Pretty much everywhere you look, biodiversity in the Bronx River Forest is just really robust, really healthy. Uh, it's just it's absolutely beautiful. We are still in the forest now. We are entering the botanical garden up ahead. So here we are in the botanical garden, but in, in a special part called the Thane Family Forest. And this is actually the largest contiguous extent of old growth forest in New York City. It's just magnificent. It is magnificent. So how old do you think these trees would be? Oh, I mean, these were the original, like some of them are the original trees. So a lot of the outcropping that we see in the Bronx is nice, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, nice rock. It's metamorphic which means that over time it's been compressed and heated by the earth. And so as a consequence, it's very strong, very sturdy. These were the roots of ancient mountains hundreds of millions of years ago, probably about as tall as the Himalayas, um, that were called the Taconics. That's where the Taconic State Parkway gets its name from. Um, and so these are kind of like the feet of those mountain ranges. Which is why the Bronx is so rocky and Manhattan is so hilly. Yeah! Here, blow your left foot. Yeah. Here, grab Rob's hand. Grab Rob's hand. Hey guys, it's Maggie again. I hope you enjoyed that ecological tour of the river. You can help support our work to clean and green the river and make it a healthy resource for the communities through which it flows. Communities that need this river and our parks now more than ever. So just click on the link in the description in the chat and show your support. Thank you so much. Be sure to tune in again on July 25th as we go back in time to explore the history of the Bronx River.